How's it going everyone? My name is Mateo. I'm the founder of Tacoma Beast. It's all about the Tacoma. 11 years ago, I wanted to just have Tacoma Beast, specialize in Tacoma, become a doctor when it comes to the Tacoma, know all the ins and outs. And for the last few years, we've had customers ask us, hey man, my wife has a forerunner or I've upgraded because my family got bigger. I have a Tundra now. And we've had to say no for the longest of times. Let's we go. Gotta hustle. Let's it's go. time to listen to the people. We need to give them what they want. We have to create a sister company called Yoda Force that's tailored to everything Toyota off-road. If you don't do that, you will not. Ladies and gentlemen, it's official. Yoda Force is now live, and Clint Dempsey is one of our first customers. Ball in, it's Dempsey! Clint Dempsey's going! He has it in! Incredibly! Within seconds! My name is Clint Dempsey. I'm 40 years old, and I am a retired soccer player. Whoa, 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 hold up. Clint Dempsey is not just a retired soccer player. They call him Captain America. He's insane at playing soccer and he took the USA team to the World Cup and some of his plays are just absolutely amazing. Just take a look at this. Talk about the lackluster start to the last three World Cups for the United States. The absolute perfect start to the 2014 World Cup for Clint Dempsey, Jurgen Klinsmann, I grew up in a big family. My parents put me in a lot of different sports at a young age. Soccer is a game that I kind of gravitated to because it was so continuous, not a lot of stoppages. I uh, also had a big brother, uh, five years older than me, that was really passionate about it. And when he was in high school, that's when he, we found out about Dallas and trying to do club ball. So went up there, started doing the club thing, was able to get a college scholarship to Furman University. There I was able to get seen by the national team, played in the U-20 World Cup. And by doing that, was able to get picked up in the MLS, played three years there, was able to make the national team, play in the World Cup after the World Cup, was able to play in the Premier League with Fulham and Tottenham, and then was able to come back and grow the game in the States with uh, Seattle Sounders. And then that's it, retired after that. And uh, now I have uh, six kids of my own and I live in North Carolina. The vehicle I had when I got back to the States um, was a Ford Raptor and I loved it. It was a great vehicle, but then my brother was always talking about Toyota. He had a Tacoma and I was like, I don't know if a Tacoma would be big enough for my family. You know, I have a lot of kids and then I started looking at the Tundra, saw that they uh, were doing a new hybrid that gets better gas mileage, fuel efficient, but at the same time still could have that performance of getting off road. That's why I ended up making that change. I'm happy that I did. It's going to be sick. When we originally sat down with Clint to build him the truck, there was no parts available. And we told Clint, we're like, hey man, parts are just starting to come and become available for the new Tundra. Are you sure you want to jump on board? Because we don't really have lead times. We don't really know when this truck is going to be built out. And he said, man, let's make it happen. They shipped it to South Dakota to C4 so that we can start building the truck. And for me, that meant the world because for you know, someone like Clint Dempsey to trust us with such a big project and uh, trust us without even looking at the truck was just amazing. What's up Yoda Force? My name is Wes with C4 Fabrication. We are here in Sturgis, South Dakota at our headquarters and right now we're about to build Clint Dempsey's 2022 Tundra. So come take a look. We got the wheels and tires off right now. We're gonna be doing a ton of upgrades to this thing this week, so we're super excited about it. New wheels and tires, suspension from Westcott Designs, and a whole lot of C4 armor, which we have laying right over here. All right, so what we have for C4 armor, front bumper, we're getting a full Overland Series front, mid-height bull bar with tube gussets. So it's gonna look really mean on there. It's gonna increase his approach angle. We're gonna throw a 40-inch Baja Designs light bar and a winch inside. It's gonna look great on this truck. The rear sitting back here, we have our Overland Series rear bumper for the 2022 Tundra. There are some spots to integrate some recovery points as well as some flush mount lighting. So that's gonna look really nice on there too. Obviously the truck's black, so it's gonna be murdered out. And then right here we have our 2022 Tundra sliders and then Clint opted to do the step plates with the C4 logo. So it'll be a nice zero degree plane. He can step up, access his roof rack, do whatever he wants to do. All right, and then Clint opted to go with some 35s on this truck. And without a lift, 35s are gonna be really tight. So Westcott Design makes essentially like a collar perch lift kit with some spring spacers in the rear. So this is gonna give us the added height we need with the armor. 
to clear those 35, no problem. All right, so the lift that's going on Clint's truck is just a temporary solution since we are adding a front and rear bumper that is gonna bring the whole truck down. The suspension is gonna sag a little bit. And since we're upgrading the tire size to 35, it is gonna create a little bit of rubbing. So in order to fix that, we're adding a temporary uh, lift kit. This is not gonna be in the long run. We are going to be upgrading to a long travel with King coilovers. Um, so this is it's gonna clamp onto the coil spring tighten this down and it squeezes the coil spring together so it takes the pressure off of this top hat on the strut then we can take the strut apart without the spring blowing everything apart Can I just start it on fire? I would just hold it back. I was a big Batman fan growing up, so I've always liked the, the, the color black. I always kind of liked something that's rough and kind of rugged looking, uh, almost like military, kind of like doomsday prepping. But I want a vehicle that can do everything. I'm like a person that's always like, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. So that's the kind of vehicle I wanted to build. Something that was good fuel, that was fuel efficient, that, that had power that you can go off road, get into the woods, that could perform, that could do everything that you wanted, had that look, made you feel confident being in, excited about getting in every day to drive around, um, especially with r running my kids to train in and, you know, back and forth all the time. And then in my spare time, doing the hunting, being able to get off road and stuff like that. So that's kind of what was the plan, trying to develop something that could that could do it all, like a, like a Swiss Army knife. this build for the truck, I've never actually driven a Toyota Tundra before. So without even driving, when test driving, when I bought it, you know, because it was tough trying to find the Tundras, there was like limited availability. In terms of trusting Yoda Force, Tacoma Beast, the, the work that I saw online through, through the social media platform gave me enough confidence that we were gonna be able to make something dope because of the builds that I was able to see done, the videos of how they performed, uh, in, in difficult terrain. So I wanted to have something that, that could do something similar and you know, trying to have something that, that looked cool but also could perform well. All right, right now we're just getting ready to uh, remove the shock. That way we can drop the axle and put in our new spring spacer. So we just removed the stock steps on the Tundra, installed the Westcott Designs lift in the front and the rear, which should give us about two inches up front, one inch in the rear, nice and level stance for the 35s. Next step, we're gonna move on disassembling this whole front grille, bumper, and fascia so that the front bumper can go on. We had to disassemble the grill. Uh, the grill is 
part of the bumper and everything up front, but we have to take, get the wiring harness out, all the sensors, the adaptive screws, all that kind of stuff has to come out so we can put it into the new bumper. And just the way these are made, there's a whole bunch of plastic pieces and uh, clips and screws and everything. You have to disassemble all of it to get the parts that we need out of there. We are done prepping the front bumper. It's time to cut. This is the most exciting part. You know, you have a perfectly brand new vehicle in front of you. We're just so passionate about the outdoors, about going out there and being fully geared up. You know, we're willing to completely cut a perfectly brand new Tundra and it's about to happen. So we've gone ahead and we sent the tires to get mounted on the wheels. For this build, Clint decided to go with the Yokohama Geolanders. These are 35 by 12.5 on a 17 inch method 305 wheel. They're matte black. Let's take a look at how they look on the truck. So we're prepping the bumper. There's four different sensors in the truck, parking sensors that get relocated. So we have all those secure. TSS sensor gets relocated into the bumper. We have a bracket for that. And the garnish gets attached to the outside. So the bumper's all prepped. Fair leads on. Now we're about to bolt the winch on and then it'll pretty much be ready to go on the truck. So we just pulled this mile marker winch out of its box. I'm getting the control box ready to mount up. We'll have to see if we can leave it here where the bracket's intended to put it or if we're gonna have to relocate it somewhere else up in the engine bay. But we'll get to work. It was incredible to see how C4 was the first company to design a bumper for the new Tundra and to see all the barriers that they had to make it happen, right? Uh, when you pull up the whole front of the Tundra apart, you really start to see all of the wire harnesses, all of the sensors and all of the challenges that Toyota has kind of given us uh, aftermarket companies to make a steel bumper work. And it was insane how they actually made it happen. Every single sensor in this Tundra is gonna work and it's gonna work perfectly how Toyota intended it to. It's amazing to see how C4 did that. All right guys, so with our 2022 Tundra front bumpers, we include this little bridge skid plate that bridges the gap between the bottom of our bumper. So we just pulled that off because what we installed on Clint's truck is a front engine skid from Adventure Motors, based out of Kansas City. Um, those are our friends over there. They designed full skids for the Tundras. They don't have the full hybrid skids available yet. They're working on them, but this front engine skid is gonna be a sweet addition to this build. So that's up right now. All right guys, so the C4 front bumper is installed. Wheels and tires are on, it's sitting on the ground, and now we're moving on to installing our 2022 Tundra rock sliders. So we got a couple of floor jacks. We're essentially just gonna raise it up into place, make sure that we're good to go as far as fitment, and then we'll bolt it into place. The cool thing about these sliders is we use these custom nut sticks that are actually labeled for each frame plate. So I have everything laid out here in order. And once they're in place, I'll kind of go a little bit more in detail on how everything bolts together, but it's pretty straightforward. Yes, yeah, so we have these nut sticks that are getting inserted from the outside of the frame rail. And they all have specific bends so that you can kind of fish them down to the bottom. All right, so how these nut sticks work, attach a little bit of wire, fishing, whatever you want so that you don't lose it. It gets fed inside the hole on the outside of the frame rail. And then based on this angle, you can perfectly line it up with the hole on the bottom of the frame rail. So you essentially hold it like that, and then your hardware comes up from the bottom. So we're not using U-bolts, no drilling. Still gets us a really good bite on the frame to attach these sliders 
especially with this kind of C channel frame plate that we have. We're gonna go ahead and cut the plastic for the rear bumper. Uh, the way these bumpers are made, there's like a, just a really big plastic panel that wraps all the way around up to the fender and we need to cut a portion of that so our uh, steel bumper can go around it. All right guys, that wraps it up here at C4 Fabrication. We have Clint Dempsey's truck dialed in with all of our armor, front bumper, rear bumper, rock sliders, and now it's gonna be headed to some friends over in Colorado to get some more upgrades. For me, what I liked about the C4 armor, I mean, really it was looking at photos and, and, and of the best builds, the ones that I that I would pick out and show y'all. Y'all would tell me you know, those are actually the C4 and that y'all have a relationship with them. So I was like, awesome, let's get them on the phone. It looks sick, man. We're officially done here at C4. We've completely armored up Clint's truck. Now it's time for me to drive his Tundra all the way from South Dakota to Colorado where I'm gonna meet up with Lucid Wraps and True Automotive to continue this build. What's up, Yoda Force? I'm Jake with Lucid Wraps. I'm gonna get this Forerunner out so I can get Clint's brand new Tundra in. He uh, gave me a call, wanted a satin black wrap, and I was like, that's pretty cool, but I got something cooler. This is a rugged series. Still got a satin finish, super scratch resistant. It's gonna look super rugged. Next step is to measure it for all the panels and then I'm gonna start cutting the material. I've kind of already started doing that and then I'm gonna start prepping it, taking off the door handles, mirrors, all the emblems, taking the chrome off. PPF is paint protection film that goes uh, sometimes from the dealer, we'll put some on. If I wrapped on top of that, you'll see that line. So usually I like to remove the PPF so you don't see any lines. With new adhesive on newer vehicles, it's a lot easier. And if you pull it against itself, so if I pulled it this way, it'd probably rip, but if you pull it against itself, it comes off a lot easier. I'll wipe this down and then I'll take a uh, rubber wheel to it and clean, get that all off. I'm taking this off because if you look right here, this panel right here is a separate piece from this body and this area is pretty difficult to wrap. So I do want to take this part off and plus the chrome, you want to wrap that chrome, get rid of it because nobody likes chrome. Who does like them? Like what? Like the chrome? Like, like this chrome should be something that somebody could add on at the dealership. Like, oh, I want the chrome package. But they all should come black, like standard, right? Like if you want chrome, that should be extra. <laughs> that way, yeah, man, I hate chrome. <laughs> I'm 
I'm gonna start with the tailgate. I'm gonna start wiping it down and working my way towards the front. And then I'm gonna do the, wrap everything the same way. I'm gonna start from the back and work my way to the front. So we got a mixture of steel, aluminum, steel, aluminum, steel, aluminum. That's how all the new tundras are. I grew up in Miami and just being able to see, you know, all these Lamborghinis, Ferraris and everything getting wrapped to perfection. I've never seen a work done like the one that Jake does. This guy, he's so meticulous and it's incredible how he applies his material. Definitely recommend the guys if you're in Colorado or anywhere in the nation, you guys can fly him out or he can drive to you depending on whether you guys are willing to pay for his work. He's amazing and he's the right guy for Clint's truck. I'm lucky that I've been able to do kind of three builds now. I never knew that I'd be financially well off that I could do something like that. The, really the last two that I've done with the Ford Raptor and now with the, the Tundra have been the biggest ones. But uh, it's just been a fun process to be able to understand what you want to do with the vehicle, what aftermarket things you want to add to it to help with its performance and, and with its look. You start learning more about vehicles that you didn't know before. so. The more that you know about the vehicle and how everything works, it, it, it's kind of like, it takes, helps you take more ownership of it. All right guys, I'm almost done wrapping this thing up. The only thing that's missing is the handles and mirrors. After I put those on, I'm gonna wrap those and then this thing is pretty much wrapped up. That's what I use all this scrap for, um, from chopping what I call trimming the fat for all these little pieces. All right, leave a comment below if you hate chrome. <laughs> all right guys, it's been a total of 28 hours of wrapping this truck. Now I'm tired <laughs> and now it's heading over to True Automotive to get some more goodies on it. Jake is officially done wrapping the truck. I love the color that Clint decided to go with. It looks incredible. From here, I'm gonna be driving the truck to True Automotive. We're gonna meet up with Austin. He's an incredible shop down in Colorado, and he's gonna help us finish installing the rest of the products. kidding <laughs> <laughs> all right so we, we wanted to start with kind of the hardest part which is figuring out where we're going to wire everything so one of the things we have to start with wiring is going to be our air compressor for our lockers we're going to be doing an arb single um being as hybrid we played with the new tundra quite a bit but not the hybrid so we're very limited on space and constraints the uh basically the regular 12 volt battery is actually going to be in the back seat behind the passenger seat so we wanted to start with figuring out how we're gonna route it. So we actually found a factory grommet um, on the body, um, and we actually have fed a wire through um, to the interior so that we can connect basically our power to our battery up here. And we're gonna be placing our small ARB single compressor on the frame. Our buddy Billy here has got the compressor. Basically, we'll start getting the wirings kind of pulled, and then we're gonna do some thread certs um, on the frame and kind of go from there. So instead of using uh, tape, it's just like a cleaner way of getting this guy set up. Uh, 
Um, the plate is normally like a sandwich plate, so it's this gives you like a mounting plate. We're not gonna use it, but it's a really nice thing to, for me to use as a template. I had it rotated the wrong way, so I have to <laughs> remark my template, but that's okay. That's why you double check. I rotated the compressor up so all of the controls are nice and high. All right, so we got some thread inserts. We're able to twist this up, get a really tight clearance to the bottom of the body, but enough for play between the two. We've got our harnesses here. I'm stoked with the way that looks. I think it's gonna be nice and clean. When we were creating a build list for Clint, uh, he really wanted us to do a front locker. It was new to everyone. We reached out to ARB, we said, hey, does it fit? They hadn't tested it. We were kind of the first ones with True Automotive trying to figure out if a locker and gears was gonna work for this vehicle. I like to drain the diffs before we pull them so it makes less mess. I ended up selling my truck to one of my buddies, the other truck that I had before. Without a truck, it was like, it was it was kind of a tough situation for me because it was tough to wait. And then also the back and forth about what things we were gonna add, were they gonna be able to come in? Had they even made the product yet? It was, it was a cool process to be able to like learn a lot about the, the different parts that you could put on the vehicle. But at the same time, you know, you had to show a lot of patience. I'm not gonna throw them out just in case. I don't know what these look like in here. I know that this is the same diff as previous body style, but just in case. And we just have a nice book of notes to compare for all the diffs that we've built. Unfortunately, we don't have a 22 Tundra, so we're gonna do it on the fly. We opened up the front diff we came to realize that it just it was not going to work and uh, this really set us back as far as timing goes so we got this 22 Dundra diff pulled apart we were hoping to use the previous generation's ring and pinion setup to re-gear it but unfortunately as you can see here the pinions are very different different heights different thicknesses the bearing races are all completely different a lot thicker on the previous generations so unfortunately we won't be able to re-gear this diff we won't be able to change the carrier the whole four-wheel drive system operates through what was in there originally and unlike the other generations where it has a disconnect inside this tube for the passenger side it's not there anymore so we can't change the carrier so unfortunately we'll have to put this back together they're probably going to have to come out with some kind of special locker carrier for this and uh Unfortunately, until then, it's going to have to go back together the way it was. Yeah, I mean, it was frustrating, but at the same time, I know that during this process, you got to be patient and it's difficult doing a new generation build. It's tough, but at the same time, you know that in the future, they're going to be able to, to make something happen. Here in a few months, uh, they might be coming up with something to do that and we might be able to, to add that. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's definitely something we talked about during the build better to wait and have it how you want it so they can perform well than than to rush and not get the the product that you want we don't want to call you guys and let you know that there's delays but we have to do it we like to have, keep good communication uh, so i reached out to clint let him know transparency is key what happened and thankfully he was understanding that did kind of slow down the build process but we're continuing to make it happen and that's what counts all right, we got this diff installed back in the Tundra. Now we're gonna jump back to finishing up all the wiring and the roof rack. Cool, so now we're gonna start wiring up all these lights here. The center bar and the lights up on the rack, we're gonna wire up to the S-Pod. The factory switch, we're gonna wire up to these, these guys on the side, turning them into the Baja connector. Yeah, we're just gonna hook up the winch too, and then go from there. This way. with a black stripe. So there's my ground. Like 
Uh, so normally now we would like to re-secure the wiring, make sure nothing's hanging down, uh, but we're gonna wait until we run the wiring for this bigger light bar and the winch power wires, because we wanna make them all go the same direction. We're gonna leave everything loose for now and then tidy it up after. Looking into the owner's manual, the way for them to jump start this car if the battery was dead is you ground it off a point under this cover on the engine block, and then you pop this cover off, clamp here to jump start it. So that tells us that this circuit has enough power to handle 12 volts consistently. So we could potentially steal one of these power lugs off of this block. This one, unfortunately, is the same size as this, but it goes right into this inverter, which is pretty pricey if something backfires. Um, but this is taking 220 volts and turning it, or 240 volts and turning it into 12 volts to here to power this. These ones likely go to the battery, but the best way to do this is go straight to the battery, which means we need to make these about 10 feet longer. Correct. So batteries in the back seat. Um, direct to battery for a winch in any circumstance is very important. So we are gonna be remaking those wires. Would we be removing this wire off of the winch and making new entirely, or just extending this? We will be making new entirely. New entirely. We do not wanna have a connection point or anything like that. Um, any sort of potential to have failure. Mm -hmm. Straight to battery, that way, high success. And it's done right. Right now we're doing the cat bag exhaust for this Tundra. I'm kind of just mocking everything up, making sure we have all the right parts, and then uh, gonna take down the old exhaust and get everything ready to put in. I like the way that the exhaust is not too showy, that it's sticking out when everybody can see, so it's kind of like understated. It's not too flashy, my vehicle, but at the same time, it performs. I just think having a little bit of mystery to your vehicle is cool. We're setting out pieces for the up top roof rack, and we're gonna start building that up. And marking our holes for the roof so we can drill it. Tom, measure twice, cut three times, something like that. We're going to be knocking out these knockouts for the Baja lights, the Baja pods. We're going to cut this out with our air saw, then we're going to drill two holes so we can tap them. Guys, we're going to be installing the AFE airbox setup here, changing the filters. I'm going to start with pulling out the old stuff, install the new stuff. So on this uh, intake install, you have to swap over mass airflow sensors with the new tube that this goes into they have you swap hardware for it. And they have new hardware 
to go into their inserts. As we continue on on the 2022 Tundra, really we've been focusing heavily on the wiring. Primarily there's gonna be roof rack lights. There are gonna be three light bars in total. So that's a lot of wiring. So it's very, very important that we be super tidy. We generally like to go through the factory grommet. Well, we have to be very careful. You don't wanna cause any interruptions at all with your factory wiring loom. You don't wanna poke wire, anything crazy like that. So you can see our split looms coming through. So. This is essentially all of our wiring for everything except for the winch going to the back of the vehicle. So far, she's looking good, everything's functional, and we're so excited to put it back together. So this up top rack, um, they give you provisions for, uh, in total, uh, six lights in their loom using Deutsch connectors, which is really nice. So what I'm actually gonna do is run uh, these three large connectors, which are basically going to our switch system um, out. I'm gonna mount it up underneath our fairing up here so that you can't see it at all. And then all of our, the rest of our wiring is gonna be gone on the passenger side for all of our Baja scene lights, essentially. He'll have the opportunity to put a chase light back here as well with this harness. So it kind of gives you room to grow into if he wants to add additional lights. All their looms are really nicely braided and already hooked up, so it's just about making sure everything looks tidy the way it should be. You know, if you ever needed to replace a light, say a light went bad or you decided to change your mind, now you don't have to rewire everything, you just have a connector in to change. What are we having? We're going pro. This is the most affordable way to buy a pro. You buy the grip. So as I'm walking around the Tundra as it's getting built, it's, it's like kind of seeing an artist paint a painting right you start to see it come to life you see how it started you see where it's going and I all of a sudden notice that the grill is kind of being left behind if we leave this stock limited grill that's on there it's not going to complete the truck the trucks not gonna look finished and I immediately call Clint and I'm like dude I'm not trying to upsell you on this but we need to change the grill. It was just something like I felt like I had to tell him. I sent him a couple pictures. He saw the vision. He said, man, make it happen. And that's exactly what we're doing. All right, so swapping out the grill here, we're gonna be taking out all the screws that surround this whole entire bezel, and then you keep the painted part, ditch the center part. Just swap out the center section for the new one. All right. And just like that, we now have a new Pro Grill swapped onto our hybrid new Tundra. So right now we are pulling the harness for the rear bumper lights through a factory grommet, and then we're gonna be pulling it into the driver's side rear seat area where our S-Pod is mounted. Once it's all done, it'll should be nice and clean for us. All right, so we're getting ready to mount our S-Pod. Um, definitely feeling like this area right in here is gonna be our best bet. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark right now where I kind of want it to go. And then that way, when I pull it back off, I know where I can drill my holes and get this thing set. But it's within arm's reach of the steering wheel. And I think it should look really nice. All right, moment of truth. Um, we've got our, basically our in, or out as you may call it, to our switch pad. 
Um, I think it came out looking really nice. Always a little nerve wracking drilling into a uh, brand new leather on a brand new truck, um, especially when it's not yours. <laughs> but we're gonna plug this guy in. And you'll notice there's like this cool little pocket inside the uh, new Tundra and Sequoias that gives you just so much room right here. Kind of tucks up underneath this dash a little bit, so it's fighting me a little bit. Much better. You got a good gap here, everything clicked in. You click this lower panel in. I think that turned out really slick. All right, guys, we're on the final stage on this 2022 Tundra. We've had a lot of challenges, but we've overcome them, uh, primarily due to the hybrid system and the battery being in the back. We made some brackets for our S-Pod to mount to. Got all the wires going towards the front. Happy to be at the final stage and really hoping Clint loves his new truck. For our last install, hardest of them all, Husky Floor Liners. Wow, it's been a long time, guys. Um, it's been a long time since we started out building this truck, mostly because we were waiting on parts and we were trying to figure out if certain parts from the old Tundra fit and whatnot, but officially, after a long wait, it's safe to say the truck is finished. It's time to send it off so that Clint can see it, and I I know he's gonna love it. That looks so good. That's so cool. Now, there's a lot of tools and stuff back there. Well, I was uh, going up to Raleigh. Um, my kids had training and I was with my mom and my dad. They were in town and they, we all got to go to the Toyota dealership that it was uh, shipped to. Yeah, I mean, getting your eyes on it and, and not knowing, right? You, you saw pictures, but until you see it with your own eyes and you're up close, there's certain things that you, you don't really notice. Talk about the, the front bumper, how it was still aggressive, but it didn't stick out too far. The rock sliders, just, just how they looked and fit the car, the rear bumper. Um, as well, the, the roof rack, how it was still kind of aerodynamic, um, and just the, the, the lights that it came on it, and uh, the wrap, really the wrap by Lucid Wraps. That's the best wrap that I've had on any of my vehicles. Up The satin wrap that they put on, it just had a, had a really cool look to it, and almost like a doomsday, like Batman style, and uh, that's kind of what I was going for. But I was also excited about seeing the tires that I put on there, the Geolanders. The, the method rims that I got on there. So it was like seeing how everything kind of popped. I'm happy with how everything looks and look forward to like really taking it off road and, and, and pushing it more. If you're, if you're passionate about something, go out there and, and, and work for it. The work you put in is the work that you get out. I think you have to love something to be successful. Um, and if you love something, love something, you'll stick with it. It's something that you'll kind of do when others aren't looking. For example, like the hard work that you put in. Not everybody gets to see the hard work, but they might see the end product and they'll think it's easier than what it is. But by going through the steps, by going through the bumps in the road, it makes you appreciate something if it was, if you had to work hard to it to achieve it. So those are kind of the things that meant the most to me when I look back on my career and when I look back and in terms of like how I want to like raise my kids and motivate them going forward is that like you got to go through tough times, you got to stay consistent, you got to put in the work and if you don't love it then it's going to be hard to make it so I think you just got to get find something that you're passionate about, put everything you have into it and no matter what if you fail or don't fail at it by chasing your dream you would have had more fun than if you never would have. Nice. There we go. There we go, bro. We're done, my man. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. No problem.